Okay, this morning, after a couple month hiatus, we're starting to film again. Uh, there are a number of reasons why we didn't film, and I'll do a video on that at some point. Hi, Maya. Uh, Maya is helping out this morning. This morning, we're doing a fish we almost lost in the winter storm uh, and its aftermath. Uh, we had 31 fish left. I set up a small breeding colony that I thought was a... a a male and nine females. Uh, they were all, they were little, and uh, turns out that you know, a couple of those became, uh, grew up to be males. Uh, we saved 28 of those 31 fish. Uh, every time you handle fish, you run, run the risk of uh, losing uh, some, and these are some young, these are 10 young females I'm going to add to the breeding colony. These are the nine, the nine females. And then those are six young males we're going to set aside. And these three males we're going to keep as breeders. Let's go ahead and put them up here where we can look at, at them. I you can just go with two. Uh, we're going to go with three. Uh, the interesting thing is you see the variation in the population. We have this yellow finned male and we have this red or orange finned male. Uh, the yellow fin is more typical. I'm going to keep the red in the population for a while and decide what to do with them. But that's an example of how breeder selection can alter a line. If I purged those two yellow fin males and used only the red fin male, and, and made him back to his daughters, granddaughters, and uh, three or four generations, I'd have uh, all, all of them looking like this instead of like the, the more typical uh, fish. Uh, so breeder selection by uh, a hobbyist or a breeder uh, can alter a fish fairly quickly. But since we've always had some of these kind of orange fins in the, in the population, I'm going to keep them in there. We're going to put him up. We're going to use these three males. Susie only want to go with two, but I like this little male too. See him? He's a good backup breeder. He won't get to do much with those two big males, but he'll get to do some. Let's take a look at it. typical females. Like all the Alonicaras, did I mention what this fish is? No. Nope. No, I didn't. Okay, we're working Alonicara, Jacob, Freiburgi, uh, Undo Reef. Uh, it's fairly different looking from the typical uh, Jacob, Freiburgi, so I'm sure somebody's going to split them out. These are it's typical Lemon Jake females. Is what? It's known as in the hobby. what? Lemon Jake is what it's known Yeah, Susie says the common name is Lemon Jake uh, in the hobby. You'll note that the females, unlike um, uh, regular Jacob Freiburgi females, don't have much of a, a liar tail or pointed fins. Uh, and like typical Alonicara females, they're not attractive. Okay, so we're going to set this up. We'll get a little bit larger one. We, oh, what reproduction did we get? <laughs> we only got 34 fry out of there. Now, there's probably a lot of little fry in the... 300 vat that gallon vat that they came out of that we don't net out because uh, handling little fish is a good way of killing them. So we leave them in there, but we're going to put these uh, three males and 19 females. And of course, I could on these little ones, I could be wrong. Those there could be a late developing male or two in there, but uh, I'm going to take that chance in order to build up the colony. We try to have. 40 to 50 females with about three or four males in a breeding colony uh, in order to get the production that we want. We aim for having at least 300 uh, fry. We're 10% of that right now. Uh, we'd like to get up around 600, and some of our strains do that. Some don't. Some are really prolific. Some aren't. This one's never been as prolific as the regular Jacob Uh but they're coming back from from almost being gone, uh, coming back from only 31 fish left. Okay, good fish keeping.